What's up, Eagles fans? Welcome in. We're going to talk about the Eagles depth chart today, uh, post-draft, and see uh, what they look like you know, going forward into the preseason. Hopefully, we have a preseason um, and a season. Uh, but just want to go down the list and kind of make this short and sweet, just give you a little bit of my thoughts on their depth chart. Uh, I do think this team is uh, very talented right now. I think they could overachieve uh, if given the chance to play this year with the new additions. On the outside with uh, Rieger especially, um, I think that could really open up a lot for them, you know, for Ertz and Goddard. And we'll kind of go on to that in a little bit. Also, I think defensively they made some improvements. I know the big loss is Malcolm Jenkins, um, but I think he'll be able to be kind of replaced by committee back there. Um, and obviously our cornerback situation looks to be a lot better right now thanks to Darius Slay. So, offensive depth chart, obviously first things first, quarterback Carson Wentz. I think most rational Eagles fans feel very good about Carson Wentz. He's had a great, you know, couple of years, and I think that's really been uh, even more impressive when you consider he hasn't really had a deep threat, and that's kind of what makes Carson Wentz special, is his ability to stretch the field. And also, you know, the thing that we forget is Carson Wentz is extremely good at getting out of the pocket and, um, you know, finding receivers when they can create space downfield. And that's the thing the Eagles have really been terrible at. I know they're bad at creating space on you know normal routes or they were last year, but when you can scramble um, for 10 seconds and still not be able to find a receiver, get separation, um, I used to play defensive back. It is really hard to guard a scrambling quarterback for 10 seconds. I mean, you got these receivers are just basically trying to find an open spot, and our guys really just didn't even have the wherewithal to do that. They did in the year that he uh, you know almost won the MVP, but last year there was just absolutely no separation and I think Carson Wentz could be a legitimate top five MVP candidate um, if our weapons stay healthy. Back up Jalen Hurts. Feel good about Jalen Hurts. I think they'll use him in some packages. Um, you know I don't know what his long-term quarterback um, situation will be like. I do think he's better than a lot of people give him credit for. Um, he did have a great year at Oklahoma but part of that is Oklahoma really is a quarterback factory. Um, you know, their receivers are usually substantially more athletic than the cornerbacks they're playing in that Big 12. Um, you got teams like Kansas in there and, you know, Texas Tech, teams that really just don't have the athletes to match up. And as you saw with Mayfield and Murray, really if you make the right read and, um, you know, find receivers, oftentimes they make so much happen after the catch, you know, which is what C.D. Lamb did uh, for Jalen Hurts last year. Third quarterback, Nate Sudfield. I really like Nate Sudfield as a third backup. I think he has the ability to really sling it. And I, he kind of reminds me of Nick Foles. He's not crazy athletic. His arm is not, you know, incredible, but he knows how to loft it up. Um, you know, I think of like Alshon Jeffrey and the way that Nick Foles used to throw back shoulder throws. I think Sudfield has that sort of ability and uh, is definitely a very valuable third quarterback. In the running back situation, obviously we have Miles Sanders entering the year as the workhorse for us. Um, you know, and that's really exciting to me. I think what he did last year at the end of the year was incredible. And, you know, I can't just say it was Miles Sanders. It was Boston Scott, too. If you look at those last four games of the regular season, those two were as formidable as a one-two punch as you'll find, um, you know, during that stretch. Now, obviously, that's a short sample size, and there is that potential for the sophomore slump for both of them. Um, but I really think that, you know, they're really talented players. I mean, Scott is a backup running back. I don't know if he's a starter anywhere else, but as a change of pace guy, um, he's quick but also powerful. And obviously his size in today's NFL, it's actually, it's always been an advantage. You know, it's tough for linebackers to see. Um, and it's tough because he's always, you know, usually has a lower pad level than the tacklers. Really, really like both um, Sanders and Scott. And I think Sanders will continue to make a huge impact not only in the running game, but also in the passing game. And um, I really think, you know, over the course of his career, he'll you know end up being a top five running back in this league. I really believe that. Um, and Scott will really be a valuable change of pace guy. Now, third running back, Corey Clements listed there right now. I'm not a huge Corey Clement fan. I'd put him on a little bit of the overrated side. I think he had a good run in that Super Bowl year. Obviously, he has real, real durability issues, um, you know, serious durability issues. And I'm not sure he's really powerful or – you know, laterally explosive. Then again, he's a third running back, um, so I'm kind of asking a lot here, but I'd be open to see, um, you know, they could maybe experiment with that third running back spot. I think they could upgrade that position. All right, on to the receivers. Obviously, Alshon Jeffries coming back this year, and um, I think he's going to make a huge, huge jump back into the fold. Now, I don't think him and, and Wentz have that same chemistry that him and Foles had. I think it's definitely hurt Alshon. Wentz is more of a 
you know, he likes to fire the ball in there while Foles was more of a lofter and kind of let Alshon make plays, which is what he really is. He's more of a basketball player as a receiver than a, you know, hard slot, a hard slant guy. You know, he's he's someone that can really dominate you with his size and um, is able to high point the ball. But that being said, I still think he could be valuable, um, especially when you have Jackson in the lineup and you have a Rieger in the lineup to kind of clear up that underneath. On to the other receivers. Obviously, Deshaun Jackson, I think, is the favorite to start um, outside. And then uh, you have Rieger there as well, who's, you know, obviously we'll see, but I'm very excited about him, his threat, not only as a down uh, field threat, but also his threat coming off jet sweeps, I think will be very valuable for us. He'll kind of do some Darren Sproles types of things for us, in my opinion. J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, I think he can take a big jump this year. I think he also will benefit from the vertical the vertical element of our offense. Now, obviously, we're not going to have three guys running vertical every time, but given our um, you know offense at this point with so many explosive weapons, I mean, it's pretty feasible that they would run a high percentage of at least one receiver going vertical just to stretch that underneath and um, you know really allow guys like Alshon, Ortega, Whiteside to make plays. Now, some of those speedsters, obviously Marquise Goodwin's a big addition, um, you know, and John Hightower's a big addition, and Quez Watkins, you know, who's, who knows? I think it's hard to tell who makes the team. I don't know if they're going to keep, you know, five speedsters. Um, I think they probably will keep some balance, and Ortega, Whiteside, and Jeffrey are more of those, you know, 10 to 15-yard guys, and then the rest of them are just burners, man. Um, and they're a little bit limited in their route tree right now. Obviously, they're young, and at this point, they've in their college career has mostly been vertical threats. So we'll see what they do roster wise. My prediction, you know, either Goodwin or Hightower or Watkins. I don't, I don't see all three of those guys making the team. Um, and uh, you know, it's going to be come down to camp, in my opinion. Tight end, feel very good. I'm only going to mention the two that really matter. Sorry, Alex, Alex, and whoever else. Um, Goddard and Ertz are tremendous. Um, again, I think Ertz will benefit from limited um, double teams that he'll receive this year with our refreshed and reinvigorated receiving core. And I think Goddard's going to just keep getting better and better, man. And obviously, you know, he's a great pass catcher. He's not Ertz. But what he does after the catch and what he does in the run game cannot be understated. I mean, that dude really is a bully on the, you know, pass protection not only pass protection but run blocking he's excellent so i feel very good about our tight end position going on to left tackle looking like andre dillard um a lot of rumors that jason peters is going to come back i'm going to sit here and you know go on a statement right now going to limb and saying i believe jason peters will be back whether he starts at left tackle or they move him inside we shall see now if they move him inside the left guard you got dillard at tackle G jason peters at left guard jason kelsey at center brandon books at right guard lane johnson at right tackle if he does come back and they put him out there at left tackle, then you got him at left tackle, and you're going to have Isaac Salamalo in at left guard. Either situation, I, I feel very good about our offensive line. Obviously, last year the injuries deteriorated us more, you know, down the stretch uh, with Johnson and Brooks. But I mean, Johnson, Brooks, and Kelsey are as good as a center to right side of the line as you're going to find. Jason, uh, Brandon Brooks is the best player in our team. It's either him or Fletcher Cox. Um, you know, and say Amal is solid too. Peters, obviously, he has his struggles with false starts and he's sometimes a little outmatched athletically. Um, but I think him and Dillard is, is the best case scenario. Insurance for each other, but also letting Dillard, um, you know, maybe take some baby steps this year as well. He did look to struggle a little bit last year in some of the games. On to the defense. Now, the best uh, part of our defense, unit wise, is the defensive line. Um, and it's in my opinion, substantially better than the linebacking core and um, the secondary. And the best position, um, individual position on the team is the def uh, defensive tackle. Uh, defensive tackle, you have <laughs> Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Malik Jackson, and Hassan Ridgeway as your top four. Um, that's, I don't know any other team that has four guys that good. Um, you know, and then obviously <laughs> Fletcher Cox is arguably the Aaron Donald's better than Fletcher Cox, but Fletcher Cox is a top three defensive tackle in the league. Um, you know, and then you got guys like Javon Hargrave and Lee Jackson. I'm extremely excited. Um, the Eagles have always been great against the run, and they're going to force passing situations, and that's not going to change this year. Um, I, I really think our defensive line could be one of the best in the league, and it's going to really depend on one key guy, and that key guy is Josh Sweat. So moving on to the defensive ends, obviously Brandon Graham, we know what he is. He's a tremendous player. Um, 
you know, sometimes struggles to get to the quarterback due to his lack of, you know, length against elite athletic left tackles. Um, but the dude's a workhorse, tremendous against the run, and tremendous when they move him inside, and then, which is why Josh Sweat is so important. Because in my opinion, if you can get Barnett and Sweat on the outside and let Graham move in there with um, Fletcher Cox, you know, that's the most dominant you know, defensive line I could think of in terms of pass rush, in terms of our team and what we could offer. Um, you know, basically you're swapping Barnett for, you know, Chris Long, I think Chris Long a couple of years ago, and um, Sweat for Vinnie Curry. You know, and I think if you can get those guys, and Sweat has a lot of talent, he really does. If he can, you know, become a valuable, you know, pass rusher, that could really help us. Derek Barnett's in a contract year, so that's best case scenario for us. He's going to be trying to ball out. You know, I'm not high on Derek Barnett, in my opinion. He's just limited athletically. Um, a lot of times when he does get sacks, he's great at uh, getting off the ball very quickly. And, you know, he does have a knack for that. But uh, I think Josh Sweat may end up being the best pass rusher out of that bunch, even this year. I think Brandon Graham's obviously proven himself, but Josh Sweat has a lot of talent. And um, he's the, lo the longest and the lankiest, the fastest of those three. And I think he could make an impact this year and really help us. On to the linebackers. Now, linebackers are, on paper, um, our worst position by a pretty substantial margin, in my opinion. Um, but with that being said, I do think that we are an underrated group in the sense that some of these young guys might be able to take major leaps this year. Um, that middle linebacker spot, you got T.J. Edwards, who uh, pro football focused, uh, rated him, I saw something on Twitter, as one of the most efficient tacklers in the NFL last season. It wasn't a huge sample size, but... The dude's a bull. He's a run stopper. That's what he is. He's not great in coverage, but he is a run stopper. And then our other linebacker is kind of the opposite. Um, Nate Jerry is a little bit better in coverage. He's not the greatest athlete. He's not the biggest dude, but he's smart. He does a little bit of everything. Um, he has, you know, instincts in the pass coverage aspect because he was a safety uh, originally in college. Um, not a great tackler. That's the biggest knock on him. But hopefully our defensive line can be so dominant that they're not put in situations where they're asked to do too much at the linebacker position. The other outside linebacker options, you got Latavius Brown, uh, Davion Taylor, I think could be an interesting option. But in my opinion, they'll play a lot more nickel because their slots, um, their slot corners or their nickel options in general are a lot better than their second outside linebacker options. Um, that's where I think you'll see Will Parks or Avante Maddox, um, you know, different slot guys, nickel Roby Coleman, obviously. So we'll get into the cornerbacks in a second, but. In my opinion, you know, I think there's going to be more nickel than anything. And, um, you know, I really don't see them playing three linebackers too often. Going into the cornerback position, obviously Darius Slay was a huge addition for us. I think that's going to be big. I think we'll break the curse uh, for at least one year. Not going to lie, I do have concerns because cornerbacks getting into that 30-year-old range do tend to struggle in that press coverage situation. But I think Darius is a fluid enough athlete to give us at least one or two more Pro Bowl level years. Now the other corner, that's the biggest question mark. Um, you know, Sidney Jones, we're expecting a jump. We'll see. Um, it's going to be a prove it year. Rasul Douglas has proven he has talent, but he lacks the top end speed to guard vertical threats. Um, you know, a lot of people are high on Avante Maddox. I'm actually higher on Cravon LeBlanc than Avante Maddox. Uh, but we still, I think Avante Maddox is really best as a you know a third safety or a nickel corner. Um, I think he's tough and can tackle, but I'm not really convinced he has the pass coverage skills to be a, you know, a starting cornerback in the NFL. That's just me. He could prove me wrong, and I hope he does. Um, you know, nickel corner, you got, in my opinion, this is a really interesting position with nickel Roby Coleman, who obviously is a proven corner back in this league, especially in the slot. Um, but like I said, Craven LeBlanc, man, I'm telling you, that dude can play. And uh, I think he'll be pushing to get on the field a lot more than, you know, maybe it's expected to. Safety is to round it off. Rodney, Rodney McLeod, as we know, is a great player. Feel very good at that position. Jalen Mills enters the fold as a safety now. I think Jalen will be pretty good back there. He's a leader. His biggest strength is his confidence. Um, it's a little bit irrational, obviously, as we know. Um, but he is a tremendous tackler, and he's tough. So I think he'll be able to do well enough to replace Malcolm Jenkins, I'll say that. And then our flex safety is going to be Will Parks, and I feel pretty good about Will Parks back there as that third safety option or a nickel option. Um, special teams, you know, Jake Elliott, Cam Johnson, feel very good about those two, and I think we'll see a lot out of Rieger in the return game this year. Thank you for tuning in. Please support my channel, 
and uh, go birds.